Welcome to today's edition of The Grad Factor, the programme that's aimed at you, the students, to find out how you can secure your place in the job market. One question, what does Ozzy Osbourne, Cat Dealey and Cadbury's Chocolate have in common? They all come from today's city of Birmingham. Like it or not, we're in a society where image means everything and as a result, advertising and marketing firms are constantly evolving. WAA is one such company that combines commerciality with creativity to create business ideas. That all sounds very exciting, but in reality, do you really get a chance to be creative? We've been fortunate enough to speak to the founder of WAA, Andy Wilson, and accounts manager, Catherine Pooley. So Andy, you actually founded the company, so you're the main man, and most people will be really scared of you, but here everyone seems really happy and relaxed. So it seems like you've made a real effort to make it an enjoyable working experience. It's common sense really, if we can make it a fun and enjoyable experience to come to work, people are spending eight, perhaps ten hours a day here, uh, if it's fun we can get the best out of them. I was just about to say that, do you find that you're getting actually better results out of people simply because they enjoy coming to work? Yeah. It's, it's, it's got to be the case, hasn't it? Um, if, if, it's, if people are enjoying what they're doing, um, they can be more focused, um, they can be more enthusiastic, um, and I think it, it, it rubs off on clients when you get enthusiastic people working with you. Um, it's more enjoyable for a client to experience the WAA experience and WAA staff. Now you said you've been going for 25 years. I mean, that's an achievement in itself. What do you think really makes a successful advertising company? It's people. It's got to be people. Um, that's all we are. Um, if you think about it, we're 70 or so people here, um, and that really is, is all of our assets. Um, and it's developing people, it's bringing them on, um, it's training them, it's getting the best out of them, um, whether it's the working environment or whether it's training and development to get the best out of them. Um, and if we can actually get the best out of those people and apply them to the marketing challenges that come our way, then we're bound to generate success. And you actually founded the company yourself. That must have been quite daunting to start with. Yes, it was daunting. Um, but in a sense, we had nothing to lose. We had a, a, a huge overdraft, um, but we had a lot of ambition. Um, and uh, it was very hard work, um, um, but we made it success. And, and, and two of us started it, and we soon grew to five and then ten. Um, and it really became the, the large business that it is today. Now you touched on that there was a few pitfalls. What sort of were the main obstacles you're coming up against? There's lots of obstacles when you're building a business right from scratch. Um, in the early days, it's uh, getting your product right. Um, it's, it's finding clients and, and, and growing them and keeping a sustainable client base. Yeah. Has it been a challenge to keep up with technology? It has, um, and, and I think that's where employing graduates has been great for us because I think our, one of our second employees that we ever took on was a graduate and he came straight from university having uh, studied graphic design at university yeah. and he'd been one of the pioneers in, in learning to, um, to create work on an Apple Mac. So when he came in, he brought with him the new knowledge that was Apple Mac technology um, and what that did is it really imported that knowledge into the business and it gave us a massive competitive advantage because when we started to invest in Apple Mac technology, the larger agencies, much larger than ours, were still using old drawing boards and letter set and rotary pens, and that gave us a huge cost and time advantage um, because we were actually specifically employing a graduate who just learned those skills. It's so refreshing to hear you talk positively about obviously how, what a graduate can bring to you because I know a lot of graduates themselves are feeling disheartened and that a degree mm. doesn't mean as much possibly now as it once did. Mm. Do you find that it's actually a major asset if you do have a degree? I, I don't know whether it's so much having a degree. I think it's the experience of going to university for three years. I mean, I, I was fortunate to go to university before I started the business. Um, so in a way, I started as an intern myself. I was a, a one-man intern. 
um, and rose up, up the, the pyramid as I grew the base of the pyramid below me. But I think it's the three, year, the three year or four year experience of university really makes a difference. We find that graduates are ambitious, they're enthusiastic, they're obviously clever and bright and intelligent, but they bring with them a kind of a freshness and determination. And I think that that's, that's um, and a sort of vibrancy. And I think, I think that really adds to the agency. And when we employ uh, graduates, it's noticeable that we bring in that kind of energy and, and fresh thinking. And I think it's really important that, you know, certainly you can get it from other things, it's not just university, but I think it's the whole university experience as well as the degree itself that brings those positive things to WAA. So finally, as a man that's done it on his own against lots and lots of challenges but actually been very, very successful, and as you say, you've grown tremendously over 25 mm. years, what sort of your key tips for somebody that's thinking of starting up their own advertising agency? I'd say starting any, advertise, any advertising agency is just like, it is a business, and treat it as a business. You may be highly creative, you may be very artistic, but an advertising agency is a business first and foremost. Brilliant, Andy. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. You've been incredibly inspiring and your offices are so nice, I really don't want to leave. So thank you very much for your tips there. You're welcome. So thank you for joining me today, Catherine. No and when we normally think about advertising, we generally think of people sitting there brainstorming ideas, but mm. actually there's so much more to it than that, isn't there? Yeah, it is. Um, I myself, um, as an account manager, uh, will not be doing the brainstorming I know a lot of people think it's about uh, creative sitting in a room and just coming up with ideas. That's what I thought as well, really, because <laughs> it all sounds so very glam, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there is an element of that, but um, if you do want to go into account management, your responsibility really is to be that point of liaison for the client. So you've got to really understand um, what the client needs, uh, what their objectives are, and then you will work with the design team, the development team, um, so that you're getting the best out of those resources, so that what you're delivering back to the client is exactly what they've asked for really. It's really interesting that you said that it's really buzzy because I know a lot of people think advertising is really really glamorous. Mm. Is it quite glamorous or is it a lot of hard slog? Um, it is a lot of hard slog but the I think the perception that it's a young dynamic and buzzing industry is definitely true. Yeah. So do you think there's more opportunity to progress probably in a smaller company than there would be in a bigger one? Maybe you might get overlooked if it was a bigger company. Um, I think the onus is on the individual and if uh, you have that desire to progress um, then by all means I think a small, a small agency environment is a great one to do. So. Okay well thank you so much for that Catherine, you've really inspired me That's and right. um, it sounds like you're having loads of fun so I wish you best of luck with the rest of your career. Thanks very much. Thank you. thousand graduates will be entering the job market this summer, all of them brimming with ideas of how they can shape the future. Many will be looking towards engineering and so we've come down to the hugely innovative Jaguar Land Rover to get their advice on how you could potentially work for such an iconic company. So I'm joined now by Rob Gill and Kundu. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now Rob, there must be, as I say, huge competition, but it does seem like a very male-dominated industry. Is that correct? Is there equally as much opportunities for the women? Well, I mean, the opportunities are there. But I mean, I think the problem, if it is a problem, starts earlier. So I'm sure on your course, female engineers are few and far between. Yeah. So I think it starts earlier, and then I guess the, the hires that engineering companies will make will reflect the population, I guess, that you will recruit from. Um, but you know, we're, we're very keen to promote opportunities. Because on one hand, we are recruiting like mad, but we are keeping an eye on diversity. So you know, mm. we are sort of tracking numbers of female engineers that we're able to hire. But also, only last week actually, we did a skills session on site uh, that was open to female engineers, just to try and dispel any myths they may have about this as an en you know, engineering or the automotive industry, as a profession or as a career, in case they've got perceptions of it being you know, oily factories and male dominated, because it's not, it's very sort of technological these days now. And you said you're recruiting like Matt, that's yeah. fantastic news for people out there that are actually currently looking for work. Mm. But what really key attributes are you looking for in an applicant? Hmm. I think at a graduate level we don't recruit, we recruit for the person. And what I mean by that is we want someone who's going to fit into the organisation. So we don't, we're not after robots though or clones. What I mean is we have a profile of people that just demonstrate certain characteristics. And through the graduate scheme and through the training you get on the job, uh, you'll learn how to do the role if that makes sense. But you know, we recruit on characteristics such as we want people that have got business acumen. So even for engineering, you know, technical knowledge is important, but we want people that can think about the wider business mm. and not just be focused on that sort of aspect. But just people, you know, that have got motivation, commitment, drive, 
resilience, can take accountability. It's, it's, the, it's those sort of behaviours we want can work within teams. And it's those sort of attributes that we assess on even an assessment centre. Yeah. Competition must be incredibly high though for a position like this. It is, but you know, I sort of use the analogy of a lottery ticket. If you don't try, then what's to say? And you know, everybody that we hire was up against the same thing, uh, and the same number of people. So it's one of those things, if you really want to join, then you've got to put a bit of effort in, unfortunately. But uh, it's not a reason to not try. It's true for everything. And Kumbu, you're actually a recent graduate trainee. Um, how did you find the application process? Were you quite daunted? Um, absolutely, it was really quite long um, and tricky and, and all, all the questions were really in, in depth, or at least it felt like it. Uh, but you know, I, I felt it was definitely worth the effort and I sort of sat down and did it over a couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So it's quite a lot of time, some people don't often feel they have to give that amount of commitment, yeah. but you felt that really paid off. Yeah, definitely, I think it makes a big difference. Um, and like Rob says, you know, I, I, a lot of people I know actually sort of just would just copy and paste the same answers. Um, and I think it was quite quite good that I actually sort of sat down, went through the website. Um, there's there were, there's actually quite a lot of tips where if you sort of read and take them in, you can sort of um, direct your answer to what they're looking for. That's really good advice because you can think people have to remember that you're not against them. You actually want to get the best exactly. out of them. If they've made it through to interview stage, mm. there's a reason. You see there's huge potential. Yeah. So I guess you just want the best out of them initially. No, I'd agree. I'd agree. I mean, we're not there to catch anybody out. So, uh, but then I know nerves can get in the way, but you just need to try and put those to one side. Fantastic. Well, thank you both so much for joining me today. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, you seem, your eyes light up when you talk about the company, <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. that says everything. Yeah. Um, obviously, the future it is, it looks very, very bright, so thank you for that. Okay, thank you. There are so many advertising agencies out there, but how do I know which one are better than others? All advertising agencies are different, so you do have to find uh, the one that's the right fit for you. Uh, each one will have a different culture to them. Um, there are things that can help you find ones that um, have a good reputation, such as um, Times Top 100 um, and R&R. &R. Do you have an ideal graduate type? No, we do not. So, you know, one of the benefits, I guess, of online recruitment is you can accept applications from anywhere. So whilst we'll have a presence at certain universities where we'll have campus teams or we'll attend for presentations and fairs, we can't be everywhere, but that doesn't give students from those universities any advantage. Uh, so we'll accept applications and all applications are treated on merit from wherever they come from. Is giving a creative application form the best way to get an artist? Um, when I applied to agencies after, just after I came out of university, um, I did include a poem in uh, my application. It's a little embarrassing, but I think it did get me noticed, um, and it's something people will commonly do something like that, and I think it does make you stand out from the crowd. Um, but it is important to remember, as well as getting your personality across, that advertising agencies are, at the end of the day, a business, so they're going to be looking for professional people as well. So all standard things apply, like making sure it's laid out well, uh, it's spelling's um, perfect, and um, that you're just getting your message across well. What's your selection process? Okay, we probably have one of the leanest, I would say, graduate recruitment processes in, in that it's only three stages. So the first stage is an application form, which is online, which uh, has some competency-based questions at the end. Then, if you do well on those, in terms of selling yourself well, then there's online uh, psychometric tests, so verbal, numerical and diagrammatical reasoning. And then, if you do well enough on those, then there's a one-day assessment centre. Now, other organisations will have telephone interviews and other steps, but we just have those three. Now it's competition time and today we're giving you the chance to win a stylish Apple TV that allows you to play HD videos from iTunes and enjoy music and photos for iCloud. To enter, simply tweet the answer for the following question to at GradFactorTV. Ozzy Osbourne has three children with his wife Sharon. What are their names? A. Jack, Kelly, Amy. B. James, Kathleen, Anna. Or C. Jason, Kate, Ashley. The Grad Factor is right behind Student Enterprise and is giving entrepreneurs across the country the opportunity to discuss their ideas in front of Keith Chaplin Mabbott, a successful serial entrepreneur himself who is particularly known for leading the award-winning CVCMe.com. 
After careful consideration, Keith will select his top five entrepreneurs to compete in the Grad Factor final for a cash prize, business startup support, and the chance to become a recognised top UK student enterprise. Annie Haig, Life After Uni, a graduate advice and support network. Sam Jewell, Matopi, we're turning the web into audio so you can speak and listen on the go. Ramon Dawkins, Alpha Photography, it's a photography company catering to different types of services such as events and web. So Annie, you're giving us something we all need at one time or another, which is advice. Uh, I run Life After Uni, which is a graduate advice and support network. Essentially, graduates don't have the best time once they leave university. I'm trying to solve that problem, um, and there's a really vast, there's a really big group of people out there who don't know what they want to do and they don't know how to get there. So that's what the advice, training, and support is for. So Sam, this is something I'm really excited about because it's getting more voices out there. So tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, that's right. So my name's Sam. I'm trying to turn the internet into audio. Basically. Um, you know, why is it that we're still using keyboards and mice to interact when we could be speaking, listening to the internet every day? Now, Ramel, you're a person that's going to appeal to all the ladies out there who are very, very vain because we all like to have our photos taken and you're actually going to help make that more possible, aren't you? Yes, definitely. Um, we're currently looking to uh, set up my own photography company, so we're dabbling to events um, and portfolio and corporate. So basically, you know, any type of events, from um, dinners, parties, or if you want like, a photo shoot, that will be basically something I'm going to develop and basically get myself out there and be the best photographer I can basically be. So what differentiates you from, say, going to your aunt or your friend and saying, I'm not sure what I want to do? It's because I want to have graduates themselves who provide the advice, who've been out of university for a couple of years more than the other graduates who've come for the support, and to have specialised support which, say for example, the job centres can't provide, to provide training events uh, and networking events where graduates get together with other graduates, so they're meeting people in their own area who've got the same sorts of experiences and who are all going to help each other get to where they need to be. It sounds amazing, but how realistic is this plan? Uh, well, it's just around the corner. I mean, you know, you've seen Siri. Um, lots of people have tried it. Lots of people, some people love it. Lots of people find it's not good enough. And the one thing we're doing that Siri doesn't do is using more than one voice. With Siri, you can't hear if it's a heading or if it's a caption or if it's a footnote, you know. By changing the voices and the music and the sound effects, we can give you that information. So because it's in such early stages, how are you certain it's going to be a success? I'm um, certain it's going to be a success because um, everyone out there you know, needs the photo, the photo you're taking and not necessarily everyone has the kind of money or the kind of connections to be able to find such a good photographer so I believe that I'm, I'm able to be able to get myself out there and through you know, advertising myself and through recommendations hopefully be a success. So because you're doing so many things like events I'm assuming you're trying to keep this quite enjoyable. It's University is a great experience for everyone and everyone who goes to university is like oh wow I did this and this is awesome uh, and everyone should go to university but then when everyone graduates they're like graduate life isn't awesome why uh, so yeah I do want to make it enjoyable I want to solve the problem of graduate life not being as awesome as university life and figure out why things are going wrong for graduates out there. Can you give us some like lifestyle examples of, of putting this to use? Um, I mean honestly you know we spend more and more and more of our time stuck at our desks and you know if you're on the train to work maybe you want to be listening and speaking some emails and getting through your inbox before you arrive at your desk so that when you're at your desk you can actually do the work you need to do but when you're at work you can be interacting with the other people at work rather than you know stuck at your computer so I'm assuming at the moment it's just yourself that's working for the company, yes, is that's that right? Correct, yeah. What's the plan? Do you hope to expand? Yeah, so um, I definitely you know, we need to expand to basically have our sample photographers and possibly potentially go into videography as well. So for example like weddings, you know, and many people, etc. and so on. So we are definitely you know, be able to expand it. So rather than just me being a brand, there's also other individuals that want to be able to represent the company. So how can students or graduates get the support and advice? Well, first university training events are going to be running uh, very, very, very soon. Uh, I'm working with some investors in the south at the moment to get the first course up and running and so I details can you my, you can find the details on my website it's lifeafteruni.co.uk. How are you thinking once you've kind of got that from say sort of alpha beta sort of stage how are you going to actually market it how are you going to sell it? Um, I think we're going to kind of make it up as we go along in a way okay I mean you know we're going to try a few different routes see what people love see what people hate 
and kind of take it from there. So the two of you will work as salespersons in addition to what you're going to be currently doing? Yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm probably more of a salesperson than he is, I think. I'll be getting out there all the time. Do you have training in other multimedia venues? Um, no, I don't that so you've got the website, is there any other forms of advertising at all? Twitter, Facebook, I'll hear on us, twitter.com, straight life after uni. Uh, I update it every day and I put loads of new content up there and I hope you guys will follow me. Sam, finally, now I love the creativity aspect of it when you're saying just make up as you go along, that's very flexible, I like that. <laughs> However, is it a massive weakness not having a business plan? Yeah, once I, I, don't, so, I don't think I don't <laughs> think it is a weakness, I think it's a strength to be perfectly honest. I mean, the more... Your, the more strong your plan is, the more it allows you to get further down the road without getting any feedback or any testing. There's something really important about kind of testing, 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 testing all the way along. And you know, I've got lo we've got we've got loads of plans. It's not that we've got one business plan; it's that we've got ten business plans, and that we're testing all of them right now. And that's how we're going to figure out which ones fly and which ones die, basically. So that's quite a big gamble. Yeah, it can be, it can be, but you know, as I said, business is about a learning curve, so I'll definitely be able to you know, learn different things that are obviously out there. as your favourite part of the show. It's when we introduce to you undiscovered talent. And talented is certainly what these guys are. This is All Stars, so thank you for joining me today, guys. Thank you. You're Brad TV. You. You're very welcome. <laughs> now, I'm smirking because you've all got big grins on your faces, so I can kind of see how this interview is going to go. Yep. Firstly, do you ever take your sunglasses off? Uh, that would no, be no. No, hardly. <laughs> hardly ever when you're at home, We're you must take your sunglasses off. Um, Only when I take a shower. Yeah. Only when you take a shower. So how do you guys all know each other? Um, we like um, we grew up around the same area, like in Essex and all of that. So kind of like naturally gelled, like living had close together, being like interested in the same type of things. So were you all musicians before that, or did you start it together and a sound started to develop? Yeah, no, definitely we were actually all musicians before. Uh, it started off with myself and Chris, and then we actually met each member um, as time went on, and we found that the most you know, the, what we had in common was the fact that we all liked to, to sing or write music and rap and all that. So that's why we actually had something in common with each other and spent time together. And that's nope. where All Stars came from. I like Chris. He's a silent giant in the middle. I can just <laughs> see him there <laughs> chilling yeah. out. Yeah. So do you write Chris or is it a collective effort? Well, it's a collective effort, but as far as like the production and that, I, you know, I do most of that, you know, beat making and instrumentation. So yeah, yeah, we're trying to build something that people obviously would, you know, hopefully recognise the next years to come, you know, make some. So you want some iconic status, so who inspires you? What musicians do you sort of listen to and think, yeah, I could see myself doing that? Oh, where, where can we start from? It started off from the 90s, really, so like artists like LL Cool J, uh, Dr. Dre, Tupac, Big B.I.G., and you go to Eminem, 50 Cent, Jay-Z, all those big international artists. Now you're trying to get yourselves out there, so obviously you've got a very unique sound, but what sort of promotions are you doing? Oh, we've got a lot actually. We've got Delicious PR working for us, we're doing a lot of hard work. We've got a lot of gigs coming up this summer. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be at Battle of the Bands, we're going to be at Beach Break Live, we're looking to go T4 on the beach. It's, it's quite a busy summer and we're really excited because yeah. uh, it looks like things are going to kick off. And we've got our single Do That, that's coming out late July. So everyone should look out for that, it's a and big song. And as well as our lovely fans, we are, we are truly nothing without you. So carry on doing what you're doing because you, you are some beautiful people, honestly. So beautiful you can take your glasses off for that. That's <laughs> really smooth, I've got to watch you guys, definitely. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Can I just request one thing? Yep. Next time I see you, I want you wearing just as much bright colours as this gentleman here. Is that all right? Certainly, <laughs> you've got that. Done deal, done deal, thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. So that's it for today's show here in Birmingham. We've had so much fun. Remember to join us next time and we'll be in Cardiff. So until then, all that's left is for All Stars to play us out. Cheers. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. We are All Stars. A double L stars. Yeah, gotcha. Let's go. Wanna get down, we can do that If you're feeling like a drunk, we can do that If you wanna hit the
the club, we can do that. If you wanna hit the bar, we can do that. If you wanna get down, we can do that. If you feeling the control, we can do that. I don't need your number, girl. I'm just trying to cut tonight. I don't need your number, girl. I'm just trying uh, to cut tonight. Yeah, touch your leg, making a shake, making a wiggle. Tell me what I gotta do to get my name in the middle. I'm playing with a string like I'm playing a fiddle. I've been trying to get with you, so tell me what I gotta do. Mm. She telling me to put it in her mouth. I don't care if she ain't on T-Mobile. All that I want is a sleep profile. On the bed, on the floor, maybe on the sofa. All stars on the telly now. Chicks on the regular. The way she do it ain't no telling now. All she keep hearing from me is etc. I ain't feeling her. Her friend better her. Ride her like a bicycle on a pedal. If you wanna hit the club, we can do that. If you wanna hit the bar, we can do that. If you wanna get down, we can do that. If you feeling the control, we can do that. If you wanna hit the club, we can do that. Wanna get down, we can do that If you're feeling the good drunk, we can do that I don't need your number, girl I'm just trying to cut tonight I don't need your number, boy I'm just oh, trying to cut yeah. tonight Girls, girls, all type of girls uh, Red hair like Rihanna, all down in curls And yo, Z, what you think about Nicki Minaj? Man, I deal with her alone, I don't need a menage hey, Yo, lights for the lively, lights for the living oh. Champagne spilling and good women oh. It's not in, we start in Chilling at the bar, screaming Viva La O Star. Falling up the club, man, I'm needing a show far. The chicks that we're with, man, we need it like four cars. After party, it's the after party. Calling all the girls to the after party. After party, it's the after party. Free alcohol at the after party. Hot damn, hot damn. Swimming in the women's boat, shoes hot. Yeah. If you wanna hit the club, we can do that. If you wanna hit the bar, we can do that. If you wanna get down, we can do that. If you feeling like a drunk, we can do that. If you wanna hit the club, we can do that. Oh my God, is the second installment. No Facebook, but I love poking. I go hard like Mr. Potent. You know they really love you when they screaming. I'm talking about prime time on the big screen. I'm talking about that red carpet treatment. So be amazed. We all stars and we shutting down late. Hey. We can do it. Sure. Oh, sorry.